About a week ago, I posted a video of the Canal Valley Dragway. I did this to gauge interest. If Mountain State UTV hosted a no prep event here, how many people would be interested? It was obvious that the support was there from the racing community. The post was shared over 160 times and it reached nearly 20,000 people within a few days. A few weeks ago, I was finally put in contact with the owner of the track and I was told that he may be open to leasing it. I was able to get a meeting with the owner, but beforehand I wanted to have all my ducks in a row. I contacted my insurance company for the appropriate umbrella policy for the event. I contacted a lawyer to have liability waivers created. And I plan on hosting a couple of work days to get to place an order before an event. Just when I thought everything was going to be good to go, I got a call saying the owner had contacted his insurance company and that his insurance company advised him not to lease the track for drag racing purposes. After hearing this news, I was extremely bummed out, especially after all the overwhelming support that we got from the people who watched the first video. Despite the bad news, we're still not gonna give up. Drag racing and no prep is more popular than it's ever been, and Mountain State UTV still plans to host an event. So keep your eyes out. I may not be able to get us onto the Canal Valley Dragway at this time, but I'm gonna do my best to find a venue in central West Virginia that can house one of these no prep events. Until then, we're gonna keep racing people on the street with the Razor. Somehow that thing is still undefeated in a heads up race on the street. Unfortunately, I can see the writing on the wall that that's not gonna to last too much longer. Having said that, we've got some exciting news. Hey guys, big news. I'm on my way to pick up Johnny Porterfield from the shop and we're going up north to uh, give this guy some money for the Grumpy Vega. I'm buying the car as a rolling chassis, so we're gonna give this fella some money and uh, that way he can get the engine pulled out and he knows we're not gonna back out on the deal or coming to get the car. So hopefully in a few days or a week or so, we'll be able to go pick up our race car. Before we go any further, I need to give a huge thank you to Johnny Porterfield. Uh, he is allowing me to use his backup engine, transmission, and all the drivetrain for this car uh, until I can get some seat time and we get our own engine for it. Also, when he heard I might be getting the car, he immediately started clearing out a spot next to the Corvette for us to park the Vega. Most importantly, I need to thank my wife, Sam. She puts up with my shenanigans. She only mildly freaks out when I do things like buy really expensive razors and then break it, and now buy a race car, so thanks. All right, y'all, I'm back at uh, Johnny's shop. He's been spending the last few days clearing out this spot, so this will be where the, uh, we'll put the Corvette here and uh, put the Vega on the lift until we get the, the engine put in it. This here will be the new power plant. Like I said, uh, we couldn't afford it with that big block in it. And also, I don't have any seat time, so I'm not trying to jump in a car with eight, 900 horsepower that weighs 2,000 pounds and without any experience. We've got the engine, we've got the trans over there, and Johnny's got the expertise to, to make it right. So I can't wait.
For updates on the car, go to YouTube and subscribe to Mountain State UTV.